let's say we already have a database and we want to use it in our dotnet application well, let's see how we can do this so first of all we are going to create a new database and i already have created a script so that we can save some time so i'm going to execute it first of all let's create a database with name person db and we are going to create a table people with these columns person id which is identity column person name person email and we have a constant primary key with this name on person id field so let's create a table here okay and we are also going to create a non-clustered unique index on email so let's execute it and here we are going to enter some data so let's do that also okay so we are done with our script part now let's move to the application part so we are going to create a new application so type dotnet new web api let's name it db first yt demo okay our application is created so let's move into this directory now we need to add few packages dotnet add package microsoft dot entity framework core dot design so if you are using visual studio not dotnet cli then you need to install this package and if you are using the dotnet cli just like me you have to install this package okay let's add one more package here that is sql server okay let's open it in vs code okay right now it's uh, our default application let's open the program.cs file and let's screen up some data so yeah i need this this i don't need this one i also don't need these things and i also need don't need this thing so that is our program.cs file if you do not want to clean up your program.cs file that's okay now what we are going to do we are going to define a connection string here so connection string let's name it default let's make it a small d then define our connection strings mssql server 01 it is my server name and now here comes the database which we have created earlier and that was person db now integrated security which means we are going to use windows authentication equals to true and encrypt equals to false okay so that is our connection string so i'm going to double check my connection string so it is my server name i'm going to paste it this one so i hope everything is fine now so let's move to the terminal and now let's type dotnet ef db context scaffold and here we will define our connection string or we can just use named string so name equals to connection strings dot sorry colon default and here we will have our database provider name which will be microsoft dot entity framework core dot sql server and we will also define output dir models and in this folder our database context class and the models will be scaffolded okay so we have been succeeded let's go back to the visual studio here we can see that we have this models folder we have this person class which is a partial class and it is for a reason i will discuss about it later and we also have this person db context class here we have everything defined but 
here we have this on configuring method which i do not need so i'm going to comment it and i'm going to define it here in the program.cs so first of all we are going to get our connection string which is builder configuration dot get connection string and our connection string is default now let's type this line o dot use sql server and the name of our connection string that's it to verify if everything is working fine or not we are going to create an endpoint here so app dot map get name of endpoint and it will be people and here we define person db context context and we will return await context dot people dot to list async since we are using await here so we have to define async also and at the end put a semicolon here and our endpoint is ready so let's run our application dot net run and here we have this db first yd demo dot http here we can run our endpoints so if you are using visual studio you are just fine you just have to click here but if you are using the vs code then you need this extension that is called rest client so you need to install it rest client by i don't know how to pronounce it hua chao mao and if you do not want to use this extension you can just use whatever tool you like like postman or you can also run it in browser because it's just a get api okay so i'm going to use it anyway uh here let's rename it to people let's click on this send request and here you can see we have all our data okay so we are good so far so let's explore it more what if i want to add a new property so let's try to add one more property alter table people add age int and execute it we also need to sync it in the dotnet application we have multiple ways to do it one thing is we can just add that property here let's run the application to verify if everything works fine or not so as you have noticed we have this age field here so everything works fine you have to manually do it every time whenever you make any changes to the database it is a small change right now so it is not feeling any bad but what if you are adding multiple columns or you are adding multiple tables then it feels little tedious to do it manually let's try another option before that we are going to add a new column contact number and where care let's say it's 20 so we also have another way which is called re folding we just have to run the previous command so it is not going to run because it will recreate our classes like person or person db context whatever changes you have done in those classes are going to be lost so to run this command you have to use the force flag in our person class you can see we have this new field contact number you have been noticing that we had commented this thing earlier but it is now uncommented, uncommented because this person db context class is recreated so that is a problem with this approach i'm going to comment it again now let's move towards next solution and which is switching back to the code first let's say i want to add a new table so let's let's add it here let's name it category and i'm going to copy the namespace from there let's create the class public class 
category category name equals to string dot empty so we are going to add this class here for that we have to include it here categories and here define category we are good now so let's run the migration command i'm going to use this terminal because it is more visible dot net ef migrations add initial create which will create the migration folder here with the migration file so let's update our database dot net ef database update as you are noticing we have an error here there is already an object name people in database let's see why it is happening so we have this migration file here we have this up method it is creating the categories table it's creating another table people and people table is already existing in our database that is why we are getting the error at this point of time a table with name underscore ef migration history is created and if we look at its data there won't be any data for this table so first of all we are going to remove that migration not an ef migrations remove so it has removed those migration files now watch carefully what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow some workaround. So let's comment this thing and create a migrations again with this command dotnet if migrations add initial create. Let's look into our migration file. So we have this migration file where is going to create a new table people. So it is a problem again. So let's delete all of this and this thing also dotnet ef database update it is not going to make any changes to database except it is going to add a new row to the ef migration history table which is this value you can verify it here so our migration id and product version is added we need to uncomment this let's run the migration command again not only if migrations category added so it should be dot if migrations add category added now let's check the migration file so it have only one table which is going to be created the table is categories and that's fine so we are fine now so let's try to update the database dot net ef database update so let's verify it here in the person db and as you can see we have now categories table that's it for now see you next time